feel safe and warm as you drift into a deep sleep with tonight's wintry, sleepy story. You're listening to Fireside Memories at the Chalet in this cozy bedtime story for grown-ups. You find yourself in a lakeside community in Vermont as a blizzard arrives on Valentine's Day. A twist of fate welcomes you to the home of Martha and Ike, the owners of the local general store, who invite you to stay at their cabin through the storm. Fireside memories of their decades-old love enchant you as snow accumulates on the frozen lake. Welcome a night of sweet tales, snowy moments, and a deep, resonating sense of feeling at home. It's time to dream away. Welcome to Michelle's Sanctuary. I am Michelle. As you settle and get comfortable, think of me as a trusted companion and ally. I am here to help you harness your thoughts and tap into your imagination as you self-soothe and prepare for bed. As a story may bring you to sleep, you may wish to subscribe if you haven't already so you may easily return whenever you like. I invite you to leave your suggestions in the comments below as this community is for all of us dreamers. As you come to stillness, remind yourself that anything is possible in your dreams. And right now, you are setting the tone for the night to unfold. Change any detail of this story so that it resonates with you. I am merely the guide and every story I create is meant to be fluid and customizable. Tonight's journey is all about feeling safe and the warm, fuzzy sensations that come with a sense of home, with a sense of feeling loved. To better prepare for the story, we are going to have a brief relaxation exercise to help you find separation from your day. Another day that you have successfully made it through. As you draw deeper into the sanctuary of your mind, let out a sigh, make a sound, revel in this time to let everything go. At your own pace, inhale slowly, imagining the air takes on the crisp, wintry notes of a cabin retreat. Imagine the aromas of a roaring fire and candles in your favorite fragrances as they light up the cold darkness of winter. Feel free to enjoy a yawn when you've inhaled all the air your body will allow. And then let out another sigh. Continue this pattern twice more as you inhale, maybe yawn and sigh. As everything slows down Relaxing your body as you explore the powers of your breath. Focus on your blanket and how it exists purely to comfort you, to keep you warm, to protect you. Feel gratitude for this blanket, for its symbolism and its purpose. Recognize that the safety of a blanket is all that you need to feel a soothing energy flow of warmth through your body. This wave invites every nerve cell to take a holiday as your muscles release tension, 
and your mind becomes a canvas for the story to unfold. In a state of deep peace, return your breath to a rhythm and tempo that feels most natural. It's time for the story to unfold. Everyone who's managed to pass through the small village of Lake Reverie in Vermont has heard of Martha and Ike. Their fanfare goes back decades, fed by tales of road trips and summer holidays spent traveling through or staying within the lakeside community. Their general store was more than a pit stop. It was a touchstone, a ritual, a magical place where core memories were formed. The sweet thoughts of these vacations could be called upon by the mere smell of sweet log walls, dusty wooden floors, and baked confections. The melodious summer sounds of a squeaking and slamming screen door would forever be a portal, bringing people back to the charming general store. Back at a time when cell phones were non-existent, Martha and Ike were often the first to help stranded travelers along the highway outside their shop. From flat tires, or more urgent repairs, they were always there to offer a smile and a baked treat as families and couples and solo adventurers awaited help. They never set out to be local icons, but over the years, the thousands of souls that stepped into their homey store were made to feel like family and friends and even as their hair turned gray and time carved its passing in their laugh lines and wrinkles, Martha never forgot a face. Yet amid all the connections forged in their shop and the sleepy lakeside community, you are someone who has firsthand been invited into their family and world. Any time you receive a call or card in the mail feels like a badge of honor. To be loved so deeply by people so deeply loved is a comforting thought. Few people remain on Lake Reverie during the winter months. The winters have become increasingly lighter in terms of snowfall Yet tonight's forecast calls for a record-breaking blizzard. The snow flurries have begun to fall on the frozen lake, leaving a dusting of white on the blue-gray ice, emphasizing lines carved by ice skaters throughout the week. You and your pet stare out the sliding glass doors onto the back deck of your chalet, watching as the wind rattles the barren branches of trees that line the lake. The winds are gathering strength, powerful enough to create a slight draft around the doorframe. On steely gray afternoons like this, it's difficult to tell the time of day before the concealed sun disappears entirely, leaving long winter nights in its wake. You sip on a warm drink contained in a mug so large it nearly requires two hands. The soothing tonic helps you unwind for what has been planned as a quiet night in You've nearly forgotten it's Valentine's Day, tucked away in the quietude of your lakeside retreat. This is the place you go 
when you yearn to reconnect with yourself. Everything within the home, from the smallest decorative touches to the bigger details of the chalet, is a reflection of your spirit existing to spark happiness and make you feel good. Tiny golden lights strung across exposed wood beams cast the open lofty room in ambient light. As the snow comes down harder, the lights begin to flicker and shadows dance with urgency on the log walls before the power completely goes out. You grab a matchbox from the kitchen to light a candle on the dining table, considering how the night will unfold and what preparations to make. Your pet looks at you longingly, sending a wave of love through your being as you remember it's time to feed them. As you go about this daily task, you hear a truck engine idling on the quiet road outside the chalet that weaves around the lake. As your pet enjoys their meal, you hear a knock at the door and grab the candle to light your way. Peering through the peephole, you see Martha bundled in a crocheted salmon-hued scarf wrapped around her neck a few times, and yet it's still so long it trails down to her shins. You open the door and smile, and the snappy octogenarian doesn't miss a beat, or even greet you with a hello. She always gets straight to the point when it matters. I thought you'd be home. Tommy down at the electric company said the power's out on this side of the lake until tomorrow morning at least. The generator's keeping things going at the general store. But Ike and I wanted to make sure that you're okay. You warmly smile at her concern. Thinking you are just as concerned that they are out in this frigid weather. Her scarf flutters behind her petite frame with such gusto that you worry she might take off across the lake. You invite her in. She enters the foyer and mentions that her granddaughter insisted on using all the pink yarn to knit her scarf, failing to realize that it's enough scarf for three people. She mentions that Ike is waiting in the truck, but wonders if you might like to stay the night in their guest loft, since they still have power, at least for now. The thought touches you so. Her maternal and grandmotherly care is well received. For a moment, you lose your independent will and all the thoughts defending your ability to fend for yourself fade away. Martha looks lovingly at your pet, insisting they come along as well. And so you gather a few of your necessary items, feeling almost like a kid about to enjoy a sleepover with a beloved elder. With a weekender bag packed and your pet safely prepared to go outdoors, you meet Martha in the entryway and suit up in your winter attire and then blow out the candle. Thankfully, there are only a couple of steps between the front door and the path to Ike's truck. 
salted by you with care earlier in the day. The ice crystals and snowflakes quickly dissolve. You inhale the smell of fresh snow and feathery conifers dusted in white as I greet you with a hug and then helps to stow your items in the back seat of his blue truck. The old man, born and raised in Vermont, shows his tolerance for the cold, wearing only a blue plaid flannel jacket and Dickie's blue jeans, kept properly on his waist with a wide brown belt. You settle in the back seat of the truck with your pet as he helps Martha into the front, where she adjusts the heat vents to ensure the steady stream of warm air circulates to reach you. You notice a scarlet velvet Valentine's Day heart hanging from the rear view mirror and smile. A thought crosses your mind that you may be interrupting a private celebration tonight. But when you share this with them, they simply laugh, expressing they sometimes miss the days when their kids and grandkids interrupted their date nights. Martha declares the greatest Valentine's days were often full of unexpected guests and gatherings and they are delighted you are joining them for supper. The radio station comes in and out as Ike slowly navigates a road he knows as well as Martha after all these years. You peer out the frosted window, watching as the snow comes down heavier, and the windshield wipers swish back and forth, melting the snow once more. You feel so safe, so grateful to be included. Martha hums along to the timeless American standards that come through the speakers in a romantic playlist. And you watch as Ike shares a quick loving gaze before he turns into their driveway. You look into your pet's eyes, who seems just as calm as you despite the unusual circumstances. Holiday lights still dangle from the gable roof of the cabin, sparkling in the snow and indicating that Martha and Ike's home still has power. Martha stubbornly advocates for the holiday lights to remain until daylight saving time returns to ward off the winter woes. And Ike, knowing how much the twinkling lights make her smile, has dressed the frame of the front door and rails of the front porch with pink, red, and white heart-shaped lights for the month of February. Ike assists with your bag as you corral your pet and then follow the pair into their cabin. As you enter the front door, the rich, savory smells of a hearty winter meal fill the air. Ike has been slow cooking tonight's dinner Inspired by a French recipe, he's promised to sweep his wife away to France at some point before the busy season has them back at the general store full time. Martha chides that maybe this will be the year they retire. Their cabin has gone through so many transitions throughout the decades and now has a unique blend 
of modern organization and simplicity with just the right amount of artistic touches. Each room is inspired by a flower native to Vermont, appearing in pops of color and hand-painted petals on ivory furniture and canvases. The floral theme of the main room is the wood lily, lending bright orange-red hues. Ike goes to the hearth to start a fire. Even though the cabin feels quite comfortable compared to the sharp, cold winds off the lake. As he fills the fireplace with crumpled newspaper and kindling, your pet curiously approaches him, sniffing the air. Skylights overhead become opaque as the snow accumulates and begins to stick. Martha gestures for you to follow her up a winding, knotty pine staircase to the loft bedroom suite. She spryly darts up the stairs, not a bit out of breath, as she declares. If you don't use it, you lose it. You admire her stamina and feistiness. Recognizing that given all her bluntness and quest for truth, she's one of the most accepting and non-judgmental souls you've ever met. Ike is too. The bedroom feels like an instant home, taking you back to the first time in your life that you felt a sense of home in a place that was not your own. An oil painting by Martha hangs above the bed, capturing a patch of irises on a grassy knoll. Showcasing the lake and mountainside in spring, the narrow, violet pointed petals feature vibrant yellow markings matching the yellow sun. The quilted bedspread is the same soothing shade as the irises. Ever nurturing, Martha takes a second fluffy blanket from a cedar chest and places it at the end of the bed with a toiletry bag of items she worries you may have forgotten in haste. She invites you to settle while she goes downstairs to set the table for dinner. You take in a deep breath as you sit on the end of the bed, so grateful you got over yourself and accepted the kind invitation. The faint sound of a Louis Armstrong record carries all the way to the loft, elevating the mood for the evening as snow pelts against the windows. You inhale and take in the smell of fresh linens that carry a hint of jasmine. You unpack your bag and head downstairs to find Martha and Ike dancing to a kiss to build a dream on, as they are often known to do in the general store when the right song comes on. Your pet sits nearby, watching intently and suppressing every urge to get underfoot. Martha waves her hand encouraging you to join in. You recall a time she once said it took three years of courtship before she stopped being embarrassed by Ike's impulse 
to spontaneously dance whenever the song and mood hit him. Thinking of this and how happy they look, any self-consciousness dissolves as you gather your pet and dance with them in the spacious dining room. Louis's rich, raspy vibrato sings, Give me your lips for just a moment, and my imagination will make that moment live. Give me what you alone can give, a kiss to build a dream on. Candles burn brightly, and a crystal vase of roses in shades of pink, peach, lavender, red, and ivory sits in the heart of the table. Handmade valentine cards hang on twine strung above the glass doors that frame the frozen lake and distant mountains now coated with inches of fresh snow as it continues to fall. Icicles the size of large carrots hang down from the edge of the roof, reflecting the nocturnal winter blues of the outside world and the amber light of flickering candle flames indoors as Louis's trumpet solo echoes through the room. Ike gracefully dips Martha and quickens his pace, spinning her like he has for over 60 years. He cannot stop smiling at the charm of it all. Cynicism melts like snowflakes on a blue salt-coated pathway, opening your heart to the enchantment of tender moments. The world is so full of chaos, looming storms, and fear-driven responses that feel-good moments like this are rare and sacred and deserve to be cherished. Martha and Ike are a living testament to a kiss that built a dream. As the song ends, Martha gives Ike a quick peck on the lips and then claps her hands together, declaring, let's eat. The table is set with gold-rimmed china and crystal glasses, with pink and red lace doilies scattered about. A heart-shaped cake with icing formed into red roses sits on display, filling the air with a scent of chocolate and vanilla beans. One course after the next fills you all as your pet begs at Ike's feet for a treat and he declares this animal knows how to spot a softie. Flavors of the dishes are familiar and yet also unique revealing pops of acidity and savory notes. Each bite has the power to linger and last on your palate. You find yourself slowing down, savoring every detail, from the meal to the spontaneous laughter and warmth in the room. The candles burn down slowly, their flames reflecting on the glass doors as a contentedness takes over the room and you slice into the rose icing and luscious cake. Baked with love like every pastry and confection to ever come from the general store, 
Martha and Ike never miss a celebration. They are never bored by rituals or routines. No matter how many Valentine's days they have celebrated, they treat every day as a chance to celebrate life and relish the simple moments. They unearth parts of you that recognize how important it is to do so. Even as the hardships of life pile up over time, you may always choose to focus on the beauty of each moment. You help them clean up after dinner, feeling part of a family and as comfortable in their kitchen as you would be in your own. Stolen glances reveal their sparkling connection. One look between them unpacks a near lifetime of inside jokes and being in sync, anticipating what the other needs often before they even say it. But you know, as well as anyone that meets this dynamic duo, if something needs to be said, either one of them will be brave enough to say it. Their relationship has always relied on being authentic and giving one another the space and safety to be honest. You soon find yourself gathered around the fire in the living room. Martha places a Dinah Washington album on the turntable. Ike adds another log and stokes the fire. And you take in the photos above the mantle. One stands out in particular showing a much younger Martha with her toddler balanced on her hip outside the stoop of a brownstone in Manhattan. She's surrounded by a unique group of souls, a well-dressed older woman and man, a middle-aged man in a tweed jacket with elbow patches, a man in a blue uniform, and a smiling younger woman in a paisley dress who looks lovingly at Martha and her child. It's hard to imagine Martha in New York City having always seen her as a staple in this rustic setting, but she reveals she would visit her cousin Madeline for a weekend or two each year in the city where she thrived as a pastry chef. She explains that Madeline's daughter now runs a bakery in a small coastal village in Rhode Island. Baking clearly runs in the family. As the fire burns brightly and white out conditions surround the cabin You continue to explore the framed photos throughout the room. Martha rocks in her chair, and Ike sits in his armchair with your pet at his feet. Stories unfold, refreshing their minds and bringing back the best moments of their time together. You come upon a photo of Martha and Ike in their fifties, seated in an Italian restaurant behind two plates piled high with fresh pasta and candles burning in old Chianti bottles. Their eyes are tearing with laughter 
Ike explains they were celebrating their 30th anniversary. And the restaurant was so popular, they waited months to get a reservation. Sentimental Ike thought he would wear the same pair of pants he wore on their first fancy dinner date. He squeezed into them. Despite the few pounds, Martha's baking helped add to his waistline over time. Before entering the restaurant, a mother struggled with her child's stroller as its wheel got stuck in a tiny pothole. Ike ran to the rescue, but his pants split straight down the back as he struggled to free it. Without any other option, Martha removed her new floral silk scarf and tied it around Ike's waist like a skirt beneath his sport coat. The maitre d' wasn't sure what to make of it. It wasn't exactly within the dress code. But Ike spent the entire evening acting as if it was a fashion choice he made for himself. As Martha insisted, he best not get a drop of tomato sauce on that scarf. You wish there were time to hear all the memories of their anniversaries and holidays and moments that shaped them and to the amazing people that now sit before you. You'd love to hear every story captured in the evolution of photos on display and the uncaptured moments as well. But sleepiness takes hold, and the thick logs have burned into fading embers. Ike leads you to a side door, and a place beneath an awning where your pet may go outside and do their business safely. The wind bites at your nose and hands, Snowflakes land on your face and your pet's fur that you dust off upon returning inside. You say goodnight to Martha and Ike. Looking forward to awakening to a snow day and a lazy morning of pancakes Ike promises to make. You ascend the stairs your pet at your heels and enter the elegant ensuite overlooking the lake. With a large soaking tub, you find Martha has left bath salts and soap for you and a fresh clean towel. You enjoy a bath as the soothing water spreads warmth deep into your muscles and your pet sleeps on the bath mat. A cobalt blue and turquoise stained glass window fills the upper archway of the floor to ceiling windows. Icicles dangle outside. The wind howls through the lakeside valley, creating snowdrifts as tall as you. You inhale deeply and rise out of the water as you exhale, wrapping yourself in the towel and drying off. You change into your pajamas as your pet follows behind you. They lap water from a bowl, Martha thoughtfully placed in the bedroom. You peel back the covers and settle within the marshmallow mattress, sinking your head into the pillows as your pet spins around and then snuggles next to you. Your furry companion feels at home so long as you are there. And as you drift, 
into the land of dreams. You realize that wherever Martha and Ike may be, feels like home as well. Finding peace, finding comfort, finding serenity, finding sleep.